Welcome to Glass of Bubbly with our exclusive series of Pick of the Best where Christopher and I pair off two of our favourite sparkling wines to try and convince each other that ours is the best. Very this good. time we're looking at rosés. Rosés. I've got one from Slovenia. And mine is from England. There we go. So two quite unknown countries to a degree in the world of wine, especially amongst consumers. But nonetheless, both these countries pack a powerful punch when it comes to wine, especially bubbly. I've got the Freddy here, which is a vintage 2011. So Freddy, this is gold gastronomic from Glass Bobby Walls last year. And this winery dates back to 1892, where and the name Joseph Freddy was there at the beginning to create the winery. So a long history involved here. And that's my com that's my bottle here for the competition. Well, mine comes from England, and it is Miosham with their Phoenix Brut Rosé, traditional methods. And this bottle won a gold medal in the sprinkling category. And they were created in 1991 by David, Pauline, David and Pauline Gray. Gray in the village of Miosham in North Downs, Kent. Well, okay, not as old, but still quite old for English sparkling wine. But it doesn't come up with champagne and other well-known regions with those centuries of history. But two gold medals are having a taste off here. Where should we start? Well, we normally start with the label. So the first one, yep. we go to the label. So if we take a look at the well, label. I thought you can do that label here. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's just the uh, <laughs> tester, like... The tester bottle. Tester bottle. This is their official label. So... So... I like the fact that they've both got the... Sorry, they've both got the clear bottles, which is... Yes. And they've got a very similar colour. They do very have similar. a similar colour. But anyway, go, go for it. Uh, my bottle, Miosham, has the, uh, a windmill on, on the label mm. from the village of Miosham. Oh, that's clever. I mean, I don't have anything like a windmill, but I certainly have a nice lion on the front here. They're both quite simple design, nothing too, uh, you know, outrageous, uh, nothing too different or innovative or anything that would be kind of show-off or blingy. They're clear. To the point, um, I like the fact I've got this like, kind of bend down the top part of the label. Yeah. Um, it looks like a scarf you've wrapped around your neck and it's dangling down. I do like that. Yours is a scarf where mine sort of takes on his shield. The shield. I do like the Miosham. I like the gold. Again, a simplistic design. It stand out. For this label, though, I would like to have seen a darker all round label because it just seems a little bit not strong for me and, and it's nothing it's the same with the with the this one here the, the friendly is that same light colored i think a darker label would, would make the rosé stand out better but well, what, what are we thinking for me i would actually go with the friendly as, as my favorite i'm going to go with friendly purely because we've got this bit of information here working with passion and love for three generations to create sparkling wines of the best quality with a full expression of the terroir so maybe that just points to the point, I agree. So I'll write that down as you getting that point. So next is the capsule, which yeah. to explain why we don't have it is because these were included in the uh, 50 Shades of Rosé tasting. Yeah. And uh, is this their official... No, I think what it was, we got the bottles through even before the labels were on. So when they get sent, they just had sent them with the printed label. After they had entered the awards, the labels were printed and then they sent them on. I actually put those stickers on myself and that's why we, we, we still got the capsule. So I think really there we can't go for that, uh, the, the capsule, because we don't yeah. have a representation from this. So let's cut the capsule out for, for this time round. So we'll move on to the colour. So we have to pour ourselves a glass. We'll have to pour ourselves a glass, but they certainly look very similar in the bottle. <laughs> There we go, and the same kind of noise is what make me jump at you. So, we, you pour... Yeah, you want some of the We'll do yours, and yeah. then we'll go to mine afterwards. Okay. So, and, and what it, you see in the bottle, so it's very kind of orangey, pinky colour, but quite light uh, in style. 
you're tempted to uh, smell and taste, but we're just doing the colours for now. Yeah, is, is that sort of orange, orange blossom? It is. I mean, I, I like that orangey colour in the bowl, but it's bang on to what Miyoshim is. They're very, very similar. Hard to tell them apart. So this is the Freddy. And I think it's good that what's in the glass, the colour, is the same that you see in the bottle as well. Let me just get a mini spittoon so we can clear that. Let's have a look at the Miyoshim. Maybe there's a hint more of pink, rosé colour, but we've still got that wonderful representation of an orange or warm little sunset there in the distance. Yeah, That's what we're getting. it is very, very similar. The Miyoshin is just that sh tiny shade. Shade, yeah, um, exactly. Or pink. Pinker. Pinker, as you want to say. Pinker. So I would say the Miyoshin just takes it because it's got the hint of pink to it. And in the bottle, we can just see a touch, a shade rosier compared to the Freddy. I would agree as well. Yeah. So it's a point to me, Osha. The bubbles. The, the bubbles. bubbles. Well, it, they're, okay. they're, me, they're medium, small, medium size uh, for me, the bubbles. Yeah, the, uh, I don't, I'm just pouring a bit more in just to see, but I remember the Freddy having a bit more uh, froth around the edges. Yeah, I, I would say that the, the, the bubbles don't stay too, too long, but they're there. I can see them in your glass. You've just poured in some more. Um, yeah, okay representation of bubbles. Nothing too lively. Let's try the... What did we just have then? We had the mm -hmm. Miyoshi. Let's do the Freddy to compare that. Yeah, I think we I think we are onto a bit more bubbles here with, with yeah, the Freddy. There's, there's more of a lively top. There is. Freddy. But the same kind of style bubble, it's medium to small size, not overly tiny, considering this is an 11 year old wine in the bottle here from Freddy. They are, uh, I'd give it to the Freddy, just. I'd say the Miyoshin has slightly smaller bubbles, but it didn't have that as lively as top to it. So what are you going for? I've gone for the Freddy. I'll go for the Miyoshin. We, we can call it a draw. Sometimes we don't agree. Okay. Now for the aroma. Aroma. So we've got the Freddy in here. Yes. Mmm. Blossom. Yeah. Orange peel. Definitely blossom. Orange peel. I'd say it's touching on something like a candy, sort of. It is. It is a candy. There's an orange peel. I've got sweet spices in the background as well. Yes, definitely sweet spices. Sponge. Maybe orange sponge cake. Something like that. That kind of um, damp with touch of liqueur, some kind of orange liqueur. Yes, yeah. sponge cake. Soaked with sort of an alcohol. Soaked, that's the word I was looking for. Soaked. Fruity, raspberry fruitiness there, a little bit of red fruit coming through on the nose. Quite good. Let's, this is going to be an interesting glass to taste after. Let's try the Miyoshin. So we're going for the aromas on the Miyoshin. Now this is where the Miyoshin for me really comes into play, it's got a wonderful character, it really is this tomato leaf, this fresh tomato, touch of red berry fruits, yes. uh, you've got some kind of pink blossom in there as well, savouriness as well, a touch of savoury cheese, a whole lot going on here in, this, in the aroma and for me I know I'm going to choose the Miyoshin for the best of the of, 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 these two. Mm. What are you thinking? Yeah, it is, it is definitely that sort of being out in the in the garden with your uh, herbs and tomato plants, then sort of coming in for a quick bite to eat. Yeah, that sounds good. Getting working in the garden, in the herb garden, and the tomatoes there. You're pruning, you're doing a bit of weeding, and you come back in for a cheese sandwich. This for me is the Miyoshi Mononos. And I'm going to give him Yosha my, my point. I think it just, just edges it for me as well. I think it well. does more than just edge, personally. I think it really does take home that point. Oh. Okay. Hey. So we go on flavor. to the flavour now. Should we try the flavour? Mm. Nice. Yeah. Fresh, fruity, orange zest, red berry zest, good minerals, good, le good levels of acidity. Is that smooth, that zinniness? to it, mm. which is very nice. 
touch of saline, relatively dry but not overly dry. If there's sweetness there, it's natural sweetness come, delivered by the fruit. But I've got a saline kind of close. This could be good with very kind of uh, foods for, for me, but really good. Yeah, I agree with that saline sort of whetstone close. Let's go trick. That is a big glass of rosé. Right, let's try the Freddy Oliver. Okay. It's that nice chilled, uh, I'd yeah. say naturally, like a mixture of nat naturally sweet and also touching onto that, uh, say tart. There is, isn't it? It's got like candy, maybe candy, orange, raspberry, red berry, candy, sweets, along with fresh fruit, fresh red berry fruit, touch of maybe red apple skin in there as well. Yeah. It's certainly, it's what you expect of a rosé. The miostrum is quite a particular flavour. Now you may like it or you may not. It's a kind of Marmite moment, love or hate relationship there. I do like it. But when we come to the Freddy, this is what we want to have in a rosé. It's the red berry fruits, it's sweet to a degree, it's candy style. It really sums up a rosé for me. Really. Yeah, I, I agree with that. The Miosham, although displays its characteristics perfectly, it does have that touch of a tomato, mm. tomato leaves to it. So if you're not a fan of tomatoes, then That's true. perhaps this yeah. one isn't going to be for you. I would say that if you're going to love it, as we said, or, or not, and if you're not a fan, then you're not going to like it. And it may not represent whatever you, what a standard rosé is for most people. The Freddy does that, and the Freddy is very, very good. It does taste young and fresh, even though this is the 2011 vintage, it's still young and fresh in style. I would give it to the Freddy. Yeah, I could I could imagine tasting that in another 10 years' time, and that's still delivering on, on its character. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go for the Freddy as well. So the final point yeah. is, uh, have we been to these wineries? Uh, no, I haven't been to Freddy. Uh, I've, I've, I've met them. Uh, and that's the only thing I can say, I've been to Slovenia, and I was at a tasting in, in Ljubljana, and they had a stand there, and I saw the, the family and said hello. So that's the closest I'm getting, although we've both been in England, we may have driven past the winery in the ocean, I don't know. Well, we, have, we did meet the, uh, the owner, this, um, Who was that? He was, uh, I think, it was the owner or the creator of the London Wine Fair. Mm. Very true, Oliver. Yes, we did. I think there was a young chap on the stand, wasn't there, um, showing the, the wine. So we did. Yeah, we've been there as well. So we've kind of fifty-fifty there, aren't we? You remembered that, I didn't. So maybe that's a kind of a draw. I, I would say there's yeah. nothing standing out for me. And I've forgotten that, Oliver. So you've got that fresh in your memory, which is good. So, uh, so what's the scoring like? If I calculate the score, that is. Well, this is a first. It is. What's that? <laughs> it is three points each. Is it? So one point, one point, one point, one point, and then split score three point six, as Oliver says. So what do we do with the three point score each? Do we try and persuade each other? What do we do? I'm not sure. How I think we need to have a winner because you can't split that down the middle. And if, if you got to full time and it was a draw, you have to have penalties. You have to have a winner. So what do we say here? I mean, from from my seat, if I'm fighting the case here for Freddie, this for me is a perfect example of a rosé sparkling wine. And it does exactly what it says on the bottle. It delivers a quality rosé experience. Yours? I do agree with that. Um, of course, Miyoshi... It has that rosé experience, but it sort of jumps outside of the box mm, and yeah. it delivers perfectly on something new yeah. in the rosé industry in a different forward direction. That's a nice way of putting it, Oliver. Yeah, it certainly does give that herbal tomato style to it. Certainly, once you taste it, you'll agree, I hope you agree with what we're saying. Once you've experienced it, you go, I know what you guys are on about. Uh, I, d I don't disagree. And during the awards, this scored very highly. That's what we, we can't say too much, but last year's awards, it was right up there with one of the highest scores. So that in itself gives it a, a credit point, an extra point, doesn't it? And I do like it. Could I take a bottle of that and enjoy it? Yes, I could 100%, though I could also take the Freddy. Likewise. Um, it's difficult. It's difficult. 
Is there one thing that we can pick that may just do it for um, us? Is there a way we can look at the years? Because that's 2011 and this is a 2019. I don't think so. I think that, although that's always a good thing, I think the young wines should be given, I think, the same platform as the vintage wines if they, if they perform well. Maybe what we could do is, if I'm being fair, maybe the Ocean could take it because it's a younger winery. What they're pushing out already is of such high quality. What are they going to achieve if, probably not us, but other people are doing videos in many, many years to come, what are they going to be able to achieve? So already the level that they're at is really good. So possibly the Miochum, if I'm being fair, what about, what about you? What do you think? Honestly, I do not know. I don't know, I do but there we know. go. Honestly, they are two fantastic rosés. Well, I, I tell you what, I'm going to give it over to you, I think, because I, you remembered them at the London Wine Fair and I didn't. That's a good thing. And it's because it's different and but of such high quality. So I think, although I'm very passionate about Slovenian bubbly, I think England takes that. So there okay, we go. Well, Congratulations. I would happily take this, but... I, well, I, I will take this. Three. So, yeah. There we go. So there we go. Miosian, congratulations. Freddie, a very well deserved second place for now two. This is, well, anyway, second place for Freddie. So, but none of both gold medal winning wines at the Glass Bubby Awards. Do try them out if you, if you can. So, um, until next time, we'll say I'll, I'll, I'll hold this glass if I can manage to hold it. I'll say enjoy the beers.